Well, today, on the Monday of Holy Week, we're going to be looking at John's Gospel, chapter 12, an incident at Bethany where Jesus is anointed. I'll just read the passage first. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, the large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he'd raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. There are several incidents in the New Testament which are uh, meal times and important conversations take place. And at this meal time, it's interesting that everyone kind of fulfills their stereotype in a way, because we've already come across Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Uh, and uh, Lazarus, of course, is the one who was raised from the dead, famously in chapter eleven, uh, coming out of the tomb and uh, and, and Jesus ra uh, raising him uh, after a period of time. And we know from that passage that. Jesus already knew the family, that they were friends, uh, not simply uh, new acquaintances that Jesus had met on, on the way and on the journey. And Martha and Mary, the two sisters, also fulfil the stereotypes that we know from uh, the, the other story about them, that Martha is the activist, and sure enough here, she's serving the dinner, and Mary is the one who's more sort of devotional. She's the one who sits at Jesus' feet in the previous story and uh, gets the reproach of her activist sister, uh, when she you know, could have been helping and doing things and uh, you know, Martha has to sort of understand that being in the presence of Jesus uh, is important and appropriate. Here, uh, Mary does something uh, shocking, of course. One of the other accounts that has an incident like this talks about the bottle being broken, but here it just simply says that she pours out a large quantity of this valuable, expensive perfume and anoints Jesus' feet. It's an extravagant gesture, quite an intimate gesture, really, because you know, feet, it's, you, know, you don't really touch other people's feet, do you, most of the time? It's just not something you do unless there's a need to do it. Uh, plus, it's not necessarily a very pleasant thing to do if, uh, if their feet that have been in sandals, walking in dusty roads and so on, they're probably quite grimy. Uh, but, but Mary gets this perfume out. Um, we, it may be that Jesus has already had a chance to, to wash them with some water or something, but nonetheless, it's a very intimate moment. And she does something else which is even more intimate. She lets her hair down and, and uses that to wipe the feet. There's something very sort of sensual about that. Uh, an immensely potentially embarrassing incident, even though it's in a private house. A woman letting her hair down would be uh, quite scandalous, really, uh, particularly in public, and, and probably also even... Uh, in private in this situation uh, it's not like uh, today's l'oreal ads where women, you know, women hair down and they're telling us how they're worth it it's uh, it's the, in those days uh, women would have been expected to conceal their hair apart from uh, to uh, in, in certain circumstances so we've got a number of barriers being crossed here social norms that are not really um, ones that uh, are normally crossed the really interesting thing is that Mary feels safe enough to do that um, and that she feels secure enough uh, to be vulnerable with Jesus. And uh, I think that's something to reflect upon, really, that uh, she had a security in him that said that she was prepared to express honestly just how much he meant to her. And uh, I think sometimes that's, that's, that's an interesting thing that holds us back. You know, sometimes we feel embarrassed to say, what our faith means, uh, what what following Christ means to us, and uh, and particularly um, in terms of our, any devotion and following or commitment, can be things that we find awkward to talk about. But in fact, of course, Mary's not afraid of that. She carries on. She 
presses on and uh, she she is prepared to show Jesus just how much uh, he means to her. And the interesting thing too is that Jesus is prepared to receive that. He doesn't uh, condemn her, he doesn't criticise her, he doesn't um, um, say no, you know, don't do that, you know, that's not appropriate here, Mary, you know, <laughs> or, or anything like that. And it's not as if Jesus is afraid to, to challenge people when he needs to. But no, he receives, he's gracious enough to receive this vulnerable act of generosity. And at least if John's account of uh, uh, Judas's personality is anything like accurate, and John does seem to have it in for Judas a bit, actually, where if, you, if you read through his gospel, he highlights Judas's flaws on a number of occasions. Um, Judas, um, true to form, uh, and as John points out, he's the, he's the bookkeeper, even though he's siphoning off some funds, points out the financial value of this gift and how the finances might have been deployed differently. And I think it's interesting what's going on there, because at one level, Judas is right. You know, the poor could have been fed if that perfume had been sold. Um, and Jesus' answer can sometimes be taken and has been read by some people as a complacency towards poverty. You know, the poor will always be with you as if they're, well, you know, they're always there, aren't they? You know? uh, but it, that, that I don't think is what Jesus is saying here. I think he's saying two things. First of all, I think he's defending Mary's right to use her uh, treasure in whatever way she sees fit. Judas is taking over. He's a man telling a woman how she should have used her, her treasure, uh, her uh, precious goods. And Jesus is saying that's, that's, that's not on. Uh, Jesus is also saying, of course, that you've got all the time in the world to feed the poor. <laughs> it's not as if that problem is going to go away or the opportunities to feed and serve the poor are going to go away. That, I think the poor will always be with you is you've got all the time in the world to deal with this Judas and uh, interestingly Judas hasn't been particularly uh, desperate to feed the poor so far as far as we know uh, who knows we, we, we don't it's, it's certainly not recorded uh, to his credit anywhere so we have two things going on you know um, first of all Mary is entitled to use her resources how she sees fit says Jesus I think that's one of the things he's actually saying un under the surface here but also, there's lots of opportunities, but there's only a very tight window to do this. And what is this? Um, well, he alludes to the fact that Mary is effectively anointing his body for burial. The burial won't be taking place for a few days, uh, but she's anticipating something. And that, ante that moment won't last very long. And she's using this precious perfume to acknowledge that and to say how much uh, he means to her while she still has the opportunity because that opportunity will soon pass. So in a sense, everybody behaves to form here. Uh, Mary is devoted to Jesus, uh, just as she sat at his feet uh, learning from him while Martha was busy on the previous occasion. Here, she does this embarrassing, uh, extravagant thing to convey how much Jesus means to her uh, uh, while she has that, that, that moment of opportunity. Martha's busy cooking uh, and we don't hear from her at all. Judas is, is, is uh, looking at the books, but also perhaps being rather cynical uh, about uh, what everything is about and, and what, what's going on. And um, there's a suggestion elsewhere, there's an impatience with Judas that Jesus has not fulfilled what he expected and what he wanted. And Jesus is true to form. He is strong enough and bold enough to receive this extravagant gesture this embarrassing gesture this um, taboo breaking uh, moment uh, as an act of genuine devotion and authenticity uh, and he's also prepared to uh, uh, address some of the important issues that are pending as he says you know the, that actually he won't always be with them and that burial is coming and there's a task to do well beyond that. I think that's really what the poor will always be with you is about. It's actually saying, you know, you've got a job to do uh, in the long term. So at the beginning of Holy Week, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're entering this story and, and different people are playing their parts in, in, in ways that we might anticipate and expect. But perhaps it begs the question, what about our willingness to show devotion to Christ? Mary was prepared to be embarrassed, to be mocked, to be derided, and yet... She needed to be faithful. Um, and uh, 
And of course, it's very easy for us to share the cynicism of, of Judas, isn't it? Um, or perhaps uh, try and tell other people how they should be ordering their priorities when in fact we should be reflecting uh, upon our own. So Holy Week is a time to reflect. Holy Week is a time to assess our priorities. Holy Week is a time to think about our devotion to Christ and also our, whether we are prepared to stick by him uh, in thick or thin. I hope Holy Week will be a, a, a uh, a meaningful time for you and, uh, uh, and a meaningful t- a few days as we as we move forward so as we conclude let's pray loving God as we reflect on Mary being prepared to use a great treasure to express her love and devotion we pray that we too will be prepared to be open vulnerable and also be willing to open up at the treasures of our lives to be used for your service. This we ask in your name. Amen.